Sige, so i-run through ko lang ulit ah, ng mabilis para yung mga nahuli, makita ninyo kung ano yung kulang. So, yun nga, yung fundamental analysis is the combination ng quantitative and qualitative analysis na magdedetermine ng stock value. Okay, so may halong ano yan, uh, numbers at yung mismong nangyayari na hindi nakakuantify. So, qualitative yung tawag doon. Parang sa trabaho natin, for example, diba? uh, nung pumunta ko rito sa Kuwait from UAE, although pag kinumpute pareho yung sahod, pero may mga qualitative aspect eh. Kunwari, sa UAE, wala akong sasakyan. Hindi pinoprovide ng company. Dito, provided. Gasolina, ganun din. So, lahat, sagot nila. So, yun yung uh, qualitative part na hindi, hindi siya related sa sahod but pagka kinumpare mo, eh, mas malaki yung advantage. So doon tinitingnan yung yung fundamental analysis na magde-determine ng stock value kung magkano yung presyo ng ng stock. Okay? Mamaya pakita ko sa inyo ano pagkakaiba ng value tsaka ng presyo because they, they are they are similar but hindi siya talaga magkapareho. So may pagkakaiba. So by focusing on the company's actual business and future prospect. So you're you're really looking on the company not on the trend, not on spe speculations or not on the perception. So, mismo company, yung pinag-aaralan mo when you're talking about fundamental analysis. Okay? Tapos, it's all about mispricing. Ano ba yung gap nila in between? So, yung presyo mo ngayon versus dun sa potential na growth ng company, yung feeling the gap, doon tayo papasok as, as investors or traders. Okay, so three levels ng fundamental analysis is yung business reality. Uh, basically, ano yung nangyayari sa company? <laughs> Perception ng market. Mispricing comprises of the catalyst, yung event, uh, pag mayroong changes, ganyan, or disclosures, doon nagkakaroon ng mispricing. So biglang bababa, biglang tataas yung presyo depende sa news na ilalabas nila. Kaya yung iba, pagka ng hype, di ba? So, o, oh, bilhin mo to, ganyan. Tapos, posibleng catalyst yun. So, kung ano, in-announce sa dyaryo, mayroong politikong nagsabing ganyan. Or si Trump, sinabi to. Yung uh, trade war, for example, yung pinaka, ano yun, sabi nila, billions worth of uh, tweet tweet sa Twitter. Kasi nung pinos niya yon, talagang bumagsak yung market eh. So, posibleng yun yung catalyst. Or yung catalyst normally pataas yan eh, nag-drive niyan ng presyo pataas. Or technical analysis, sentiments sa market, and then your expectation. Okay? So, si HP, katulad ng example ko kanina, one of the things na nangyari, CHP nung nag-IPO, mataas yung presyo. Tapos ngayon, hindi na maka, makabalik. Because there's a reality behind it. So, uh, nag nagsira ang Apple Quarry since September 2018. So, competition plus imports also an, uh, an impact kung bakit bumabagsak ang presyo. Loss of 0.14 billion dun sa span ng dalawang taon na yan. Tapos yung core income nila, which is 0.75 billion, hindi ma-reach. Uh, negative 51% sila uh, within two years na operation. So perception ng market, yung earning estimate niya for 2019 will be 0.73 billion. Tapos walang growth for the next two years pa. Tapos ang PE ratio niya is 15x lang or 15 times 2019. So mamaya tingnan natin ano ba yung pa, paano paano ba nako-compute yung uh, PE ratio na yan. Tapos expectation ng ng mga tao most likely to stay cheap. Ayun e, yung perception mo, ayun e, yung pakiramdam mo eh baka ano pa to, uh, mura pa. 
So potential catalyst niyan for growth is mabuksan uli yung uh, pokwari tapos mag-rebound yung earnings nila. Okay, so tatlong level lang ng fundamental analysis you need to understand. Okay, yung business reality, so dapat naaral mo yon research mo siya. Tapos perception ng mga tao or sentiments which has catalyst your your sentiments tapos yung panguli expectations okay so doon lang iikot yun so imay-imay natin siya oh yung una reality okay so you need to know your reality ng business so macro meaning from the top so tignan mo yung business as a whole as the industry ano ba nangyayari do sa industry na yan So like for example, construction industry, build, build, build. Ano yung implication nun? Dun sa mga companies in that industry. Okay? Then you go down, tingnan nyo yung, yung nangyayari. Although booming ang construction industry, why si Mex companies still cannot uh, pursue yung growth? So, go down to your company specific. Baka there's something wrong with the company. Ano ba yung detalye ng kumpanya na yun? Okay, sino ba nagpapatakbo dyan? Yung mga ganyan. So, from, from company bottom or company specific, you'll understand yung talagang nangyayari sa kumpanya. Okay? So, dalawang question you need to ask in understanding the reality ng business, ano ba yung business model ng kumpanya? Okay, that's the first one. Pangalawa, ano ba yung probability ng growth or sales or earnings ng company na yun? Okay, so those are the things that you need to research para mas ma-appreciate yung company na bibili ninyo. Okay? And then you measure the perception. Paano naman yun? The first question you will ask, ano ba presyo? What's the share price? Okay? And then syempre, evaluate mo yun. Ang tawag natin doon, uh, relative valuation. So you compare the price of an asset to a similar or comparable asset. Okay? Example, ganito. Let's say for example, you have a, a dalawang lote, lot A and lot B. Okay? So kung tatanungin ka, anong mas mahal? Lot A, which is 2 million, or lot B, which is 10 million? Let's say, for example, yun lang yung information na binigay sa'yo. Huwag nyo mo nang basahin itong pangatlo, pang-apat. Di ba, ang typical na sagot mo dyan, ah, mas mahal yung lot B. 10 million eh. Kaysa sa lot A. Okay? So, the price itself will not determine kung anong value nung lote. So, hindi mo pwede sabihin yung presyo lang yung magsasabi kung mura o hindi yung company. Gets nyo? So, for example, uh, let's say CMEX, they say, oh, two, two, two pesos yan. But that, does it mean that mahal ba siya o mura? Hindi mo alam, di ba? Kasi kulang information. Presyo lang binigay sa'yo. But if you go deeper, ah, lot A pala, 2 million, 20 square meter. Lot B, additional information given to me, 10 million, pero 200 square meter. Okay? So if I compute the price per square meter, eh, 100,000 per square meter pala ang lot A, ang lot B, 50,000 per square meter lang. So, pag binigyan ka ng mas maraming information, mas ma-appreciate mo yung totoong value nung company. Okay? So, in this case, value is not equal to price. Hindi ibig sabihin may presyo ka, masasabi mong mura o mahal. You need to understand more ano ba yung detalye behind that. Okay? So, hindi, pwede, hindi ibig sabihin sinabi, oh, lot B is 10 million. Lot A is 2 million. Ah, mahal naman ng lot B kasi 10 million. Yun pala, pag kinumpute mo, binigyan ka pa additional information like square meter, lumalabas, mas mura si lot B. 
Okay? Ganun yun. So, hindi, hindi ibig sabihin, mura siya, without proper information or kulang yung information mo, kailangan mas ma-appreciate mo na kailangan mo pang additional information for that. Okay? Okay. So, for example, pasok tayo sa stocks. O, stock A, stock B. Kompresyo. Stock A, 40 pesos per share. Stock B, 2,000 pesos per share. O, magsasabi ka ngayon, ah, mahal, 2,000 pesos per share. Pero isa pala, 40 pesos per share lang. So, if you go to the earning, uh, 2 pesos per share ang earnings, ang stock B, 160 pesos per share ang earnings, tapos ang PE ratio niya, 20 times, saka 15 times. Okay, ang growth is 25% per stock A, ang stock B, 12% lang. Okay, so kailangan apple to apple. So kung may kinukumpara ka, tingnan mo mas maganda kung within the industry. So, kunwari, uh, mamaya, bigyan ko kayo ng mga examples na companies within the industry pero may mga pagkakaiba in terms of the valuations. Okay. So, go, going further, you need to understand also that how, how the share price are determined. Okay. So, one of the ways that uh, share price is determined is yung computation ng ano PE ratio at saka earnings per share. Okay? So pag, pag sinabing PE ratio, yung presyo divide nyo ng earnings per share. Yung earnings per share you can get it from from the marami, uh, pwede yan sa Bloomberg, uh, sometimes the brokers is giving you the report. I think in the bigcharts.com kanina na pinakita ko uh, you can also see there the the earnings per share. So, wag nyo lang compute in kasi available naman yan. But if you really want to compute, you can also do that. Okay, may formula para dyan. But I will not dwell on that because readily available naman yan information na yan. Okay, so just get the price. Divide nyo ng earnings per share. That's your PE ratio. And sometimes even the PE ratio is being given by the broker na or yung website na tinitignan mo. Okay, like investagrams.com for example, bigcharts.com. Yan, dyan nyo pwede makita yan right away. No need to compute anymore. Then earnings per share. So kung magkano yung, yung kinikita ng tao kada isang stock or kada isang share. Okay? So, once na-identify mo yon, tingnan mo ngayon yung classification ng stocks kung saan ka maglalagay. So mayroong apat na classification ng stocks. Okay, uh, we have the leaders. Pag sinabing leader, yun yung mga malalaking companies, normally the blue chips company sa atin. Okay? Ano pa? Those mostly are the favorable industry. Tapos mataas yung competitive edge niyan. Tapos merong high growth probability. Okay? Pag sinabi namang mature, those companies have uh, stable earnings. And very predictable yung growth nila. Tapos yung industry nila mature na. Pag sinabi namang speculative, okay, Ito yung mga unproven business model. Hindi pa alam talaga yung potential. Tapos, yung growth niya unsustainable. Pwedeng mataas ngayon. Normally yan, yung mga bagong bukas na kumpanya. Kasi hindi pa nila talaga alam kung paano yung operations, yung business model, kung paano gagawin. And then you have the laggards. Okay? Yung laggards, yun yung pinaka parang weakest link sa lahat. Inferior growth, mababa ang profitability, mahina ang competitive edge, 
inconsistent yung growth. Okay, ito yung highest volati- volatile sa sa lahat na yan. So speculative and laggards are are volatile, masyadong magalaw. Okay? So leaders are the preference. Uh, normally they deserve to trade sa mataas na PE ratio or price per earning per share ratio. Okay, example. Within the industry, SM Prime. Di ba? Ang SM Prime, sila yung may-ari ng lahat ng SM na pinagtatayuan. So yung lupa, kung saan nakatayo yung SM na mall, sila may-ari nun. Okay? So ang P ratio niya, 31x or 31 times. Okay, so P ratio times the EPS. Kaya 31 times versus Robinson's Land, same industry pero mababa P ratio. So kung papipiliin ka, ano yung mas may potential pang mag-grow diyan? Okay, if you'd ask me, malamang sa malamang yung Robinson's Land tataas pa. Okay? So doon papasok na yun yung expectation mo. Okay, kasi ma- ma- malay natin baka yung 31x eh yung 31 times mas ma-, ma-, ma ano na siya stable na baka kung may growth man yan mababa na lang kasi masyado na mataas. Okay, so you're comparing both of them. Okay? Ayala. Ayun, 17 times versus Costco Capital. 9 times. Okay? So, possibly Ayala, medyo mababa pa. So, may potential pa mas mataas yan. So, that's your perception. That's your expectation. Ganon din yung Costco. Kasi if you compare both of them, yung isa, leader, yung isa, mature. So, possibly may possibility pa na tumaas yun. Yun yung sinasabi natin mispricing. Okay? URC, Universal Rubina, paggawaan ng chipi ng mga uh, ano ba yung bago nila may mga kape na sila ngayon 35x 35 times versus RFM same industry okay yung isa leader yung isa mature o 15x lang so kung titingnan niyo may baka may mas potential pang lumago yung yung 15 times yung RFM Okay? So titingnan niyo yan, uh, malaki na ba siya masyado or meron pang room para mag-grow? Okay? So para malaman niyo kung merong room for growth pa, titingnan niyo lang yung dalawang aspeto. So ano ba yung driving force for the stock price to go up? If you're talking about fundamental analysis, dalawa lang yan. Okay? Mag-re-rating, re-rating, ibig sabihin yung P ratio tataas o bababa. I'll show you an example uh, later on. Okay? Or yung EPS will be based on the earnings growth. Okay? Or both. So, pag nag rating siya, tumaas siya, yung stock price tendency tataas din. Or pag nag-declare na sila ng, ng earnings nila, Kasi every normally yan, every quarter nagde-declare yan ng earnings eh. Diba? That's the time also they give dividends kung merong kung merong dividend do dividend yield yung company. So, if the re-rating goes up, the stock price goes goes up also. If the earnings goes up, stock price goes up also. So, yung dalawa factor na lang na yan, yan yung magsasabi ng stock price nyo. So, ah, uh, for example, yung nagda-drive ng share price, let's say Jollibee. Okay? So, let's say ang stock price ng Jollibee, 285 pesos. P.E. ratio niya is 37x. 37 times. Ang, ang, ang EPS niya or earnings per share is 7.7. Okay? So if EPS goes up by 
di ba normally the price should also goes up 15%. Kung halimbawa na ito yung tumaas. So kung tumaas ng 15%, dapat tataas yung stock price din ng 15%. Diba? That's what you call earnings growth. Yun yung driving force nun. Ngayon, pag re-rating naman, let's say for example, Mega World. Okay, stock price niya is 6, 6 uh, pesos per share. PE ratio niya is, uh, let's say, 10, 10, 10 times. Tapos ang earnings per share, yung kinikita ng isang shareholder, kada isang share is 0.56 pesos. So, 50 centavos. So, if you are expecting from 10x, 10 times, yung growth ng mega world to 12 times, okay, the price should, should also go up. So, if you compute that, dapat mag, magiging from 6.07 pesos, magiging 6.70 cents uh, pesos na yung, ano, yung mega world stock mo. Because of re-rating. Okay? So, ganun yun. So, dalawang aspeto lang yung titignan mo. Re-rating tsaka earnings growth when you're talking about uh, P.E. ratio. Okay? Oh. Ano tayo example? Let's say for example, um, I'll go back. Uh, share ko yung aking screen for the Okay, yung big charts. <laughs> I-share ko. Example, Wilcon. Wilcon, so para ano 'yan? Uh, Home Depot. Okay? So na I hope nakikita niyo yung screen ko ngayon. Ayan, sinare ko na siya. Okay, so we'll go on. Ayan. Tingnan nyo. Ito yung time na nag-IPO siya. Uh, actually, hindi pa to. Tingnan natin. Hindi natin... 3 years. Yan. So, pwede nyo iset yan, ha? Pwede nyo iset yung ano nyo. So, ito yung time na nag-IPO siya. Ibig sabihin, nag-initial public offering. Okay? So, market capitalization niya nasa 20 billion pesos. Ang PE ratio niya 17 times. Dito sa time na to. Nung tumaas, okay, ang earning niya rito this time, earnings niya rito sa time na to, from 1.2 billion, naging 1.4 billion na. Oh. So, nag re siya ngayon from 17x, 17 times, naging 27 times na. Okay? So, ang market capitalization niya from 20 billion, naging ano na, 39 billion pesos. O, paangat ng paangat yan. By the time na papunta dito, okay, so from 2017 na, noong 2018, ang earnings niya nasa 1.6 billion na for that year. Dito sa time na to. O, nag, nag re rate siya ulit from 27 times, naging 30 times na. Okay? Tapos, pagdating dito, 2019, ang earnings niya so far nasa 2.12 billion. So from 1.6 naging 2.12. So again, that will drive your price up, di ba? So nag rate din siya from 30 times naging 33 times na PE ratio. Okay? So ganun, ganun, ganun yung ano niya, yung impact ng stock price or impact ng PE ratio tsaka uh, EPS or earnings per share or earnings mismo ng kumpanya 
sa growth ng ng presyo mo. Tapos by 2020, they are estimated to grow to grow pa by 19%. Okay, normally sinasabi yan sa disclosure. Uh, nilalabas siya ng kumpanya. You can get it from the website sometimes or website nila or sa broker ninyo. Okay? Tapos ito, pag-aralan natin to next week. Itong mga charts na to. Ano ba to? MACD, DMI. Okay? Normally, ito yung ginagamit ko for technical analysis. Okay? So, yun yun. So, if I can share back the, the PowerPoint. Okay? So, you need to close the gap. Kasi dun, dun kakikita eh, dun sa gap na yon So yung actual price niya versus dun sa potential growth nun, ito yung mga aspect na mag, ano, uh, magde-determine. So, so mispricing plus catalyst, pag pinagsama mo yan, pag pinagsama mo yan, yan yung profit mo when you're doing fundamental analysis. So once you identify that, okay, you need to look for the potential re-rating. Re okay? Okay? <clears throat> while, while the earnings generally don't go up overnight, your expectation kasi mabilis magbago yan eh. Ibig sabihin yung market sentiments. Okay? So, paano yun? Ganito. So, pagkatalist, Pag-usapan natin catalyst. Any event that may cause a significant move in price. Example, pag nag-release ng earnings, di ba? Kung nga, every quarter, mag-release ng earnings. Sometimes that moves the price up eh. Siyempre, anong pakiramdam ng tao na nakaka-receive ng dividendo? Di ba? Masaya? Feel happy? O, so dahil feel happy ka, you need to buy more shares. If you are buying more shares, okay, dahil mas maraming bumibili, ang tendency ng presyo, tumataas. Law of supply and demand. Okay? Maraming buyer, konti supply. Anong tendency? The price go up. Bakit? Kasi masarap pakiramdam mo, nakatanggap ka ng dividendo. Or ma masarap yung pakiramdam na pagka positive yung earnings, o ikaw yung shareholder, eh iba pakiramdam mo dun. Diba? So, Actually, stock market combines with behavior, sentimiento. Ano yung pakiramdam ng tao? That's why it's very difficult to invest or to trade. Kasi ipaiba-iba eh ng mood eh. Diba? So, yun yung, yun yung exciting sa stock market. Tapos, you can also know the event through disclosures or briefings. Okay? Yun yung mga catalyst na pwede mo dyan. Tapos, if uh, may mga buyback, binibili uli ng company yung mga shares nila. So, ibig sabihin, pag binibili ng company uli yung shares nila, pabalik sa kanila, eh, that's an indicator na, oh, kasi alam nila yung nangyayari sa business eh. So, pag binibili uli nila pabalik, alam mo na yung signal na yun. Di ba? Ah, siguro merong mangyayari. Kaya binibili yung shares ulit kahit, kahit uh, mura. Okay? Also, analysts do some upgrades or downgrades. That can be your catalyst also. So if the analyst say, ah, because of my research, this will go up. Or because of my research, this will go down. That can be a catalyst for the price. Okay? Yung mga ibang aspeto, like nagpalit ng management, nagpalit ng CEO, namatay si ganito, o, o for example, SM, namatay si NDC, nagpalit ng hinati ng mga magkakapatid yung buong SM. Okay? Kaya hindi na, sila yung, hindi na siya yung number one na pinakamayaman sa Pilipinas ngayon kasi hinati-hati na yung mga assets. So it can also be a catalyst. Okay, so when you say about share buybacks, yun na yung company will buy their own shares. Tapos, 
inside insider buying naman either the director or the the employees buys company shares. Okay? Magkaiba yan sa in, insider trading ha. Okay, insider buying, you just buy the shares pabalik sa iyo. Okay? So the biggest impact is on the in expectations. Kasi nagtatanong mo sa sarili mo, do they know something that I do not know? Ba meron ba silang alam? Yung nasa loob mismo ng kumpanya na hindi ko alam. So yan yung isa sa mga signal mo. O pag maraming buyback, eh malamang sa malamang, okay, meron pupuntahan yon So sabay ka na din. Ganun yun. Pag sumabay ka, bumulusok pa taas, o di pa nalo ka. Okay? So pag may mga share buybacks, ang, ang impact niyan sa earnings per, per share, tumataas. Okay, kasi company mismo yung bumibili. Tapos may insider selling din. Okay, insider selling naman ang ang impact niyan pababa, 'di ba? Siyempre pag mas marami nagbebenta, konti supply, ang tendency bumababa presyo. Okay? So yung basic uh, tawag natin na supply and demand, dapat alam niyo 'yun. So if if you are selling Okay, sometimes yung hindi mo mara, hindi mo mapapansin, minsan yung mga uh, foreign investor pa lang ang nagbebenta. So, kahit maganda yung yung nangyayari sa business, bakit mo mababa presyo? Yung pala pag tiningnan mo um, mga foreign investor yung nagbebenta. Okay? So meron meron yang mga table na yan sa Investagrams. But I think you need to to buy the premium eh. Hindi yan kasama yata sa ano, sa free free access natin. Okay? So yun yun yung mga titingnan niyo diyan when you are closing the gap. So in summary, the goal is to find the mispricing. Okay, so three question you need to ask. Kasi para kumita ka talaga using fundamental analysis, tignan mo yung yung potential ng company to grow. And that's where you capitalize your investments. So yung current situation niya, kaya kaya talaga inaaral 'yan. I-research mo yung company. Do not buy company that you don't know. Okay, kasi magsusunog kayo ng pera dyan pagka gano'n ang ginawa nyo. So you need to understand first, look for the mispricing. Say for example, ABS-CBN, mababa presyo because of the the news, the prices go, go, goes down. But ang question, eh, permanent ba yun? So if you think it's temporary, maybe you can dive in. Ang question na lang diyan, gaano katagal? 'Di ba? Gaano katagal nang bababa siya? Like for example, right now also Jollibee. 'Di ba? So from 283 nasa 235 na lang pesos per share. So ang question ngayon doon, sasabay ba ako sa pagbaba para pag umangat siya kasama ako? 'Yun yung mga titingnan ninyo. So how do you how do you do that? Tingnan niyo 'tong mga 'to. So may mga buybacks ba within the company? So when when company are buying back, that's an indicator for you sa buy ka. May insider buying ba? Okay? May selling ba ng foreign investors? So those things will will have an impact. Tapos syempre yung re-rating at saka yung kaninang tinuro ko about the the growth earnings growth. Okay, kasi yun yung drive, two driving forces in the fundamental analysis that will um, impact your stock price. Okay, so three questions. What is the market thinking? Ano ba yung, ano ba yung trend ngayon? Ano ba yung nangyayari sa presyo? Okay, perception yun. So most of the, the aspect of this is yung technical analysis side. Kasi may trend yan eh. Merong pattern. Meron kayong titignan. So, yung iba, may mga 
may mga charting tools na ginagamit okay but we'll make sure we'll keep it simple for you tapos tignan nyo lang kung okay yung strategy na yon sa trading plan nyo okay so tignan nyo yun. what's the market thinking magkano ba pinipressure nila ngayon so ano ba yung nakikita mong iba kasi sa mga research mo ito pala so that's the business reality Okay, and what would close the gap? So expectations yon, yung catalyst. So from the from the sources, disclosures, briefings, ganyan, dun mang dun manggagaling yung catalyst mo or sa mga reports, mga news, dun manggagaling. So that's expectation. So only three things you need to understand: reality of the business, the perception, the market, or yung sentiment sa market, and then the expectations. Okay? So, example tayo. Let's say, for example, um, and limit lang kita uh, kung sino man po kayo. Example tayo. So, tatlo lang ha. Business reality, market perception, expectation. Okay, so pagka gagamit kayo ng big charts, kasi international to, always put pH on in front. Okay, share ko yung screen ko. I think di yata nakashare. Okay, so all always put pH in front of the the text. Okay, so example, uh, Jollibee. Natin. Within a year. Tingnan niyo yung fall. Ayan. Tingnan niyo. So from October to September to. October last year to, to September. Mula April. Oh, ito yung ito yung ano. Ito yung resistance. Oh. So mula April, pababa. Yan yung nangyari. So there's something here. Bakit mga baba presyo? Imagine niyo nag expand sila, nag expand sa Kuwait. On the other hand, the stock price goes down. So there's something there. Yun yung titignan mo ngayon. Ano ba yun? Ano ba yung... Yung market perception kasi iba dun sa business reality eh. ba diba? nag expand sa Kuwait, sa ibang bansa, but the perception goes down. There's something there. So, iyan yung titignan mo sa fundamental analysis. Ngayon, kung yung pagbaba ng presyo na to, tas di, you think that this is temporary, or maybe you can go go dive in. Ang question na lang dyan, when will, when will it go up? So, kung long-term investor ka, you don't need to worry about it. Kasi what goes down always goes up naman. Eh. It's just a matter of time. Okay? O, ABS, CBN. Tingnan natin. Hmm. Tingnan nyo. From here, I think dito nag-announce eh. Na, o, oh, hindi ko na i-renew yung franchise nyo. O, oh, bumaba na bumaba siya. Tapos may mga ano na rito, may mga sabi-sabi na dyan, kaya tumataas siguro presyo. So itong mga to, titingnan nyo yan, bakit ba siya bumababa? So there's something there. Okay, so maybe foreign investor is pulling out money. O baka ganun nangyayari sa Jollibee, di ba? Nung binili nila yung coffee bean. O, anong impact? Siyempre, lumabas pera. O baka yun yung impact, kaya bumababa yung presyo. Diba? So yung mga ganun, tingnan nyo siya. So if you, kumbaga sa ano eh, itreat nyo siya parang wag, parang girlfriend, boyfriend lang. Huwag nyo asawahin. E pag inasawa nyo, eh, maiipit ka dun. Hindi ka naaalis. So di ba pag ang boyfriend, girlfriend mo, bago mo ligawan, pinag-aaralan mo muna, ni-research mo kung anong gusto, 
anong anong kailangan nila, anong mga anong mga aspirations nila, pangarap sa buhay, those things. Kaya kaya lang wag mo asawahin kasi once inasawa mo, eh, hindi ka na makakaalis doon. Ipit ka na habang buhay. Okay? So if you're doing trading, you just do that. Hindi mo pwedeng uh, long term. So pag sinabi natin, ang ang goal natin for for today, if you're doing long term investing, okay, mga limang taon yan pataas. Pagka, pagka trading ka lang, maximum mo dyan sa taon. Okay, no, never go beyond that kasi sunog ipit na yung pera mo doon. Sayang, pwede mo nang i-cut loss yun eh. Or i-invest sa ibang paraan. Okay? So ayan, pababa. Sumalaman, pwede ka sumabay dito. Tignan mo na lang kung kailan siya tataas. Okay? But again ah, but kung technical analysis titignan mo, ibang strategy yan. Kasi ang technical analysis always buy high but you sell higher. Hindi pwedeng bibili ka ng, ng mura. Kasi hindi mo alam, baka pababa lalo yun. Okay? So, bibili ka ng mahal pero bibenta mong mas mahal. Yun ang strategy sa technical analysis. Okay? O, example pa. Um, let's say, megawide. O, megawide, construction to. Okay, so within one year, ayan, bigyan ko kayo na info. Dito sa time na to, merong disclosure na magbabay back sila. 2 billion peso shares. Okay, nag-announce pa lang yun ha. So, ang tendency, oh, again, ang market perception, hindi mo alam eh. Nag-announce, ang tendency, bumaba. So dito sila bumili yung actual na first buyback 2.7 million, million shares. Okay? So yung impact nun, siguro dahil alam nung company na mag-expand sila or may mga bagong projects, o tumaas ngayon yung earnings. Okay? But posible, bababa rin yan. Hindi natin alam eh. So, ahaluan mo ngayon siya ng technical analysis. May trend ka na titignan. Eh, okay, yun yung tuturo natin sa inyo next week. So, pare sa MACD. Ano yung titignan mo diyan? Pagka may nakita kang ganoon, ano yung sunod mong gagawin? Ganon. Okay? So, ganun yung nangyari diyan. So, may buyback na nangyari. Kaya tumaas to. Okay? Ano pa? O ito, AC. Ayala, Ayala Corporation. So iba po ito sa Ayala Corporation is the mother company ha. Ali or Ayala Land Incorporated is is the construction firm or the sorry, the real estate development firm. O ito magulo, medyo sideways to. Tingnan natin. Yan. So So one of the the shareholders Mitsubishi okay binawasan nila yung yung stake nila. Okay, binawasan nila yung stake nila. Dito sa part na to. So, pag medyo magulo. Uh, actually, hindi maganda example to Kasi hindi makita yung trend eh. Okay? Pero dito sinasabi, let's say for example, um, sa time na to, gawin natin dalawang taon, hindi ko makita. Uh, wait lang ha. Okay, maganda dito, pwede nyo siya rin tingnan yung, ano, yung indicators nyo. Pwede nyo i- Yan na siya. So ito, for example, dito. 
Um, dito, binawasan ng Mitsubishi yung shares nila. Sa Ali. So, yung tendency. Hindi ko alam. <laughs> Nag sideways. Tapos dito, binawasan uli nila. So, yung tendency, bumaba. So, Ayan. So, sinasabi lang dyan, yung, yung impact nun, haluan mo siya ng technical analysis side. Pero, most of the time, kuwari may mga buyback, ang tendency niyan is to increase the, the price. To move the price up. Kasi, hindi naman bibili yan normally pag uh, walang mangyayari. Lalo na pag ikaw yung CEO, for example, di ba, alam mo yung nangyayari sa kumpanya. But again, pagka tinugma mo yan sa market perception, ang perception ng market iba dun sa ginawa, ang tendency, pero syempre kung mas marami yung market, eh, iba baba pa rin yung presyo nila. Okay? So that's where the exciting part comes in. Kaya pag di ka aral-aral, hindi ka aral mo na bago invest, eh sunog ang pera mo dyan. Okay? O oh, ito, ganda example. SSI. Ayan, binili nila yung Shake Shack. Nag-partnership sila with Shake Shack. Dito. Dito, sa time na yon, Okay? So, they announced Shake Shack partnership. So, ang tendency, oh, strong price volume, oh, tingnan mo, biglang taas dito, oh, nung nag-announce sila ng partnership with Shake Shack. So, ito yung catalyst. Okay? So, Pwede mong makita yan as the mispricing, tingnan mo yung volume dito, biglang taas. Pag mataas yung volume, tapos mo momentum mo, baka momentum na yan. O, tingnan mo yan. So, pag-aralan natin yan next week. So, but the fundamental is, dahil sa partnership, the price goes up. Okay? So, that's one of the catalyst. Okay? Okay, so yun muna so far uh, for the fundamental analysis. I don't want you to be drowned on information, but that's a good step that you can identify. Just go around on these questions here. Yan. Okay, oops. Tatlo lang yan. Business reality, which you need to research. Market perception, ano ba nangyayari. Meaning, ano ba yung presyo, current price. Kasi that will tell you what the market perception is. Tapos tignan mo yung gap. Ano yung expectations from the catalyst. May buyback ba? May insiders selling ba? May foreign investors selling ba? Meron bang disclosures? na mag increase ng, ng growth ng company, meron bang declaration ng earnings, mga ganon. Okay? So, question tayo. If you have any question, uh, i-unmute ko kayo. So, yan, unmute nyo lang yung sarili nyo if you have any question. And then next week, I'll invite someone uh, to speak about uh, technical analysis so that you'll have uh, insight naman sa ibang, ibang investor din. Okay, question po. Meron po kayong tanong? So we'll talk about uh, technical analysis naman next week.
Meron po? Wala. Okay? So, yan. So, may, may nag-chat. <laughs> Mukhang komplikado talaga. <laughs> Okay. But ikot ka lang doon, May. Uh, sabi niya, mukhang komplikado daw. Ikot ka lang dito sa tatlong question na yan. And always go to the PE ratio. Doon muna. Marami pang indicator na iba sa fundamental analysis. Pero sa PE ka lang muna. Uh, PE ratio tsaka EPS. Yung formula na binigay ko kanina. P rating at tsaka growth. Okay. Tapos, uh, if you're uh, starting pa lang, go, go to the broker's report kasi mga analyst na talaga yun. So kung ano yung mga nakalagay doon, just, just have a look kung paano nila in-analyze. Tapos, basta ang question ko lang dyan parati when I, when I invest sa ano, ha, mga companies na katulad nito, if... if If I feel that the company will still be there five years, ten years from now, I'll go for it. Okay? Yun yung mindset sa fundamental analysis. Long term, most of the time. So if I think, for example, Jollibee will still be there or ABS will still be there, hindi naman siguro basta-basta papasara yan. Uh, kawawa naman yung mga viewers ng kadenang ginto. ba? Diba? So if i think that they will be still be there maybe i can i can research on the company so tulad niyan pag may mga news na katulad noon tinitingnan ko na yan ano ba yung pwedeng implication nung sinabi ni Duterte kasi i think it's temporary so maybe i can dive in get 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 some cash put money in cuz when it goes up i can sell pwedeng ganun it's just a matter of time kung kailan But fundamental analysis focuses on long term. Normally, ha? Okay? So, lagay mo pera, tingnan mo, na alam mo, temporary, so may kampan kampante ka doon na mura siya nung binili ko. Then, then look for opportunity na mag-grow siya. Okay? So, bigcharts.com naman yung charts na pwede nyo tingnan. Yung kanina, yung ginagamit ko, I normally use big charts kasi pang international din siya. So you just put PH in front, colon, tapos the stock code. Investagram is a uh, company, uh, ano yan eh, uh, Filipino owned eh. So may touch ng Filipi Filipino. So you can use that as well. Okay? Most probably mga ano yan, mga company sa Pilipinas. Okay? But they are they are also going forward na to do international stocks trading then. Okay? So bigcharts.com, yun yung pwede niyo tingnan. Okay? So ano muna? Ah, uh, kumbaga test the waters muna tayo. Kaya ang maganda dito yung follow up. Once you learn the basic, once you learn, learn the the fundamentals, implementation part, we have the community. So walang hype naman, walang ano, mag mag-share lang tayo ng ng notes. Um actually ang 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 ano lang doon mga mga news like catalyst po, possible catalyst to. Minsan yung iba sa atin din nagbabasa ng diaryo. So from there you, we can share the information. So like for example may dalawang IPO na lalabas uh, this October. So maybe you can capitalize on that because normally IPO mataas yan eh within the day. Pero ba yan mga ilang araw ganyan. So tat pag taas sama ka, pag baba alis ka na. So, you can you can capitalize on that. So yung yung community na yan ito upgrade na to ng ano natin ng financial literacy natin but then again as I, i'm telling uh, don't forget about the the foundation okay it's good to invest in the stock market but if if you forget about your your financial foundation eh mali yung ginagawa mo 
Okay? So, yan. So, I hope you learned something today. Uh, for those who didn't attend, kung wari, mga kaibigan nyo, just share the link. I'll be uploading this to YouTube. Okay? So, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Bye. Uh, see you next week for for our topic on technical analysis. Again, strive every day ha, not to be wealthy but also to be worthy. Okay? Bye.